Why, hello there. Well, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> All right, I've got to divulge some hard truth to you. Are you ready for this? Let's get into it. This week, woo, has been truly insane. Um, the wind is, is agreeing with me. This week has been absolutely insane. Insane, insane, insane. So, where do we start? Let's start back the very end of last week, beginning of this week, on Saturday night when Kyle and I and his parents were sitting for dinner and I look over and Kyle is having a seizure. So we had to get him down off the chair, onto the ground, get him to his side. And his stepmom, Denise, called 911. The ambulance came and out of extreme precaution, they had to take him to the ER. It was eventful and I was having these thoughts leading up to that experience of like wow it's been so amazing Kyle hasn't had any seizures since our wedding and then I was met with that it was it was really heavy and a lot to hold and I felt like I really had to hold it together because neither of his parents had ever seen him seize and I don't know if they've ever seen anyone have a seizure it's pretty traumatizing so I was just trying to remain as calm as possible but didn't really allow myself to didn't really allow myself to like process all that happened and like it's a lot it's really hard to see the person you love like quite literally struggling in front of you so that happened we came back he was doing fine Monday so that was Saturday. Monday, we go to his oncologist to get his blood work drawn and go over everything, see how he's doing with his chemo. We're leaving the medical complex. And I'm about to turn right onto this main road and I look over and Kyle is having a seizure. And one of my biggest fears has been that I'm gonna be driving and exactly what happened happened. Thankfully, we weren't like on a major road. Like I was literally right next to the emergency room. So I pulled over, put my flashers on, get out of the car, and I'm yelling for the person behind me to come help me. I can't imagine how the rest of his day went because that had to been quite a shock. He helped me lay the seat all the way back and get him positioned where his face was at least on his side. It was like, you need to turn around and go to the emergency room. So we spent another day at the emergency room. And it was just exhausting. And it's been quite challenging the rest of this week because Kyle's parents are staying with us and we are so beyond grateful that they're here. They've been helping out so much, but our space is quite small and there's really no privacy. And I'm definitely an introvert. like really realized that through the pandemic and I need like my alone space to really recharge and I don't have it at all. Even if I'm in like our tea room, which is downstairs, you can hear everything that's happening upstairs. And as someone with ADHD, I just like really sensitive to sounds. And so it's really overwhelming because I can hear people walking and talking and music playing and anything I can hear it so it's just really hard for me to find a space where I can have quiet alone time and it's been over a month of sharing our space and it's just it's just become very hard and it's really hard to admit that because I feel shame that I can't handle people being in my space especially people who are helping us, it's, it feels like a really difficult thing to admit to myself and then to those that are here to help us to say, 
I appreciate you and I'm so grateful, but I'm also having a really hard time having you in this space. And it being because I need space to decompress and I need space to be able to just breathe and when people are in my space, I am a sponge and I pick up everyone else's energy and so it's really hard for me to discern like what is mine and what is not and then not have the space to process that, if that makes sense. And so I've just been really, really struggling this week. Yesterday and the day before were like the culminating <laughs> high of it all. I just have felt a lot of anger and frustration and just agitation. And being a caregiver is very hard. Our whole lives have changed so so quickly and I've had no time to like really come to terms with everything or even just slightly process it like we got married and then Kyle started chemo and then he started Optune and there's just like so many things and me stepping into caring for him in a full-time capacity and not focusing so much on the things that I used to do it's just a really big change and I'm struggling. I am really struggling. Yeah, it's, it feels, it feels nice to like admit that and let it go and know that it's okay to be struggling and that, you know, today I woke up and I felt a lot lighter and I felt a little more hopeful, yet there's still heaviness in all of it, so. I think I have to take my own medicine of remembering that life is about how do you hold these two extremes. And right now I'm really holding mostly of the sadness and the anger and the frustration, but trying to remember like the joy when I can find it, the joy of like Kyle and I laughing together, or playing, or my dog doing the zoomies around me this morning, or like those little things that we take for granted and I'm realizing that this experience of cancer and stepping into a caregiver role and seeing my husband in this space of him not being the version of him that I met, you know, three years ago and seeing him having to allow other people to care for him. It's really putting life into perspective and realizing that the things that I thought were important are not important and the things that really matter are being able to spend quality time with Kyle, quality time with myself, which I am neglecting, and just enjoying the simplicity of life, the really little things that we take for granted, like waking up and not feeling terrible or getting a great night's sleep and not having to wake up to an alarm. Like these little things I, I really appreciate experiencing right now. Yeah, at the same time, it's freaking hard. It is really hard. So I don't know. I think I need to go outside and like scream and like move the energy out of me. That always tends to be really, really helpful if I can get outside and just like, ah, let it all out. Um, yeah, so maybe we'll go do that. And I was talking with my therapist this week and she was saying, let's come up with like a couple small tasks that you can do to care for yourself. So those being going for a solo hike, getting in the sauna, moving my body, doing like dance because it feels good, and scheduling a massage. So I've scheduled a massage, now I gotta do the rest of them. You wanna do it with me? Like maybe that's what we should do today. Let's go, let's go sauna, get outside, and like love ourselves and remind us that filling my cup up only allows me to give more to those that I love and be a better caregiver. So, it's for all of us. If you want to help people, you have to fill your cup up first. So let's go fill our cup up.
All right. I'm gonna enjoy the sauna. Slowly come back to myself and get back in my bed and snuggle because this week has been has been rough. I'm glad I gave myself some love. I'm gonna sit in the sauna and enjoy it. And I will see you next week. Hopefully I got more positive news to share with you then. And if not, that's just the reality of life right now. It's just the reality of life right now. So taking it one day, one stride at a time, because that's all I can do. So may this be your reminder to also fill your cup up so that you can give more because I really feel a lot better having just done a couple acts of self-care, self-love, intentional time with myself and I feel like I can get better. I can be more loving and more compassionate and more myself towards the people I love instead of being frustrated all the time. So fill your cup up, have a good week, and I will see you next week.